Hey guys, welcome back. Stop, talk, and roll. We break down some jiu-jitsu rounds. Today we have, I believe his name is Arian. I thought his name was David, but Arian was at the competition that I was at a few weeks ago, uh, and he and his buddy David were competing unaffiliated. Uh, I was talking to them after. I was like, send me your, send me your matches, and I'll break them down. So uh, we have Aaron here, and I have no idea what this guy's name is, um, so we'll call him Jimmy, as is. And uh, we'll, we'll see. He sent me three rounds. Um, they're all full rounds. Uh, I don't know what division this is. I see it's a four-minute video, but it also started mid-match, so I don't know what we're talking about here. You just got lifted up. Nice job not letting him get in front of you. Oh, pretty. <laughs> okay, something tells me that you wrestle. Uh, yeah, double overhooks, uh, hips in, and just over the top. Beautiful. Nice. All right, so right on top with the pin. Okay, so right there. Let's get started with that. So um, I love this. Right, you take him down, and you're holding him down, keeping his, his shoulders pinned on the floor. It's excellent. Ride this out. Take your time. There's no rush here. There's no rush here, okay? Uh, I mean, I, again, I don't know the time in the match right now, on the footage I see here, you have four minutes, 10 seconds left. So obviously, unless something happens here in the videos, nothing. Um, I haven't seen this yet. You, you got time. So by you pulling up on this arm, the thing that I've been trying to wrap my head around, but uh, the body is made up of seven levers. So I'm going to use actually the referee because he's kind of easier to see. But uh, the four thing or seven things that we're looking at here is we have two arms two legs, all right? So that's four of the levers right there. And then the other three we're looking at is hips, shoulders, and the spine, okay? And as you, and they all interact with each other, and as you pull and pull on one, it affects the rest of the system. So in this case, when you're pulling up on this arm, like so, you're affecting the shoulders, right? So by you pulling up on this arm, it's pulling this shoulder, like this this side of the, uh, let me change colors here. This attachment, right, of the lever, it's pulling that up, which is then pinning the rest of that lever, which is his shoulders. And keeping his shoulders on the mat, keeping them pinned, keeping them covered by the mat is very important. Now, this sounds simple, but the reason I'm emphasizing this much is I see in this very next frame, in a second, you're going to lose it. Okay, so you keep him pinned, you keep him pinned, you look to go over, and he's able to turn at the same time. And that's happening because you lose control of this shoulder. And that's happening, I can see right here, because you lose control of the mid joint. So when you get attachments to a base joint, right? When you get attachments to a base joint, it looks like you're above the elbow here, you have his shoulder over here. Uh, look to improve these attachments. So this is fine, but this is better. Getting at the elbow is fine. Getting at the shoulder is better, okay? And the nice thing is when you're looking at capturing the mid-joint, the knees and the elbows, if you attach to the joint behind them, they can't get rid of the attachment uh, super easily, right? Like if you're trying to keep control of the elbow, right? If he sneaks his elbow out, that gives him the ability to move and rotate. If you stay attached to his shoulder and you stay attached to it, he can't get his elbow out. It's not possible, right? Like they're incompatible. It's either he frees his shoulder, which will allow him to have the possibility of escaping his elbow, or if he doesn't free his shoulder, he never frees his elbow. They, they can't exist. You can't have a free elbow and a trapped shoulder. It doesn't work, right? So what I would look to do here, you have a, you have a scarf hold, uh, you could look to sit up and get underneath the shoulder with your hip. Um, instead, you like to go over the top. One thing I would say here is uh, just make a smaller movement, right? The idea is good, right? Going to mount, especially in a competition situation. It's uh, points. If you're looking at holistically just controlling another human body, it's good to cover the hips. So instead of making this big movement, you can look to slide across his waist. Now. When making this decision, you can come to that conclusion by, you can see right here, his hips are open 
His legs are extended. Therefore, the front of his hips are available for you to attack. When legs are extended, they're, the front of their hips are available for the taking. When legs are retracted or contracted, knees to chest, the the back of the hips or the lower back is available for the taking, okay? You can't defend everything at, at the same time. So in this case, his legs are very open. He's basing. He's going to bridge out in a second when she gets to. So instead of making this equal big movement, you guys are making a, opposing big movements and it's going to give him space. Just settle down and bring your leg across. So I, so ex literally like put your knee across his hip and, and stay tight and low the whole time. That's going to stop his rotational movement. Right now, his shoulders are pinned, so he can't turn up top, but his hips are not, so he can turn them. So what you're looking to do here, once you pin his shoulders, is then cover his hips. You try to do that, he turns, you try to take the back, he dumps out the back, and you're playing guard now. So good job. You're staying contracted and keeping him away from getting into center mass. Close guard, good. That's annoying, but... This is competition. Yeah, looking for, for head control, keep his posture broken. Um, yep, I like that. Yep, now you could look to get around to his back potentially. Oh, we're going off screen here. Oh, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> nice. Yep. So here, I think you just missed the other leg. Here, one. Oh, yeah. Looks like he got kicked in the nuts or something. Uh, yeah, you, you got to have something on the other leg. So you go to kick him over, and this is just a good good little example. Uh, if you don't stop that other leg, you can either pick it with your foot, pick it with your hand, your knee, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just something needs to be on that other leg because he just simply steps back and, and keeps his balance, okay? Just come over to the top. Nice job staying contracted with your legs, not letting him pass, not letting him get control of center mass. Good, fighting for inside control. I like that. Yeah, so this gentleman needs to work on his passing. He needs to um, control your legs a little bit better. He's going He's he's going for broke, very much going for broke. Like he's just, you know, throwing legs and trying to go. It's not, not working. Um, this can be annoying. Uh, you can look for arm bars here. I usually do that as a top player to bait people to arm bar me. So take that with a grain of salt. If you're comfortable playing close guard, just keep doing what you're doing. If not, you could do things. You could open your guard and put your feet on his hips. Um, obviously, that's going to let him just, you know, start moving a little bit more. But up to you. Totally your call. Either way, continuing to do what you're doing, breaking his posture. Yep, there you go. Now you're going to get it. Yeah, exactly. Now you're going to get it. You, so you're grabbing both both ankles um, is going to allow you to do that. So keep him down. So when you sweep somebody, right, you put him on his butt. You got to come up. Now, I don't know what your intention was. Maybe you were looking for leg entanglements there. But whenever you go to put somebody on their butt, whenever you destabilize them, and and you have the intention of coming up, uh, I would recommend using the momentum of them falling to help yourself up. Now, uh, the nice thing is people don't just fall, right? Uh, especially in a competition setting. Like nobody's just going to fall, right? Something needs to happen. You need to interact with them in some way for them to get destabilized and then for them to fall on their back or butt or hips or hands, whatever it is. So you control that change in direction, that stability in their system by grabbing his feet and kicking him over in this example, right? So you know that's going to happen. So when you go to take him over, there's the possibility that he falls. And if the possibility is there, use that to pop up. And the nice thing is, again, you control when that happens. He's not just going to fall. Like, I mean, I guess hypothetically you can, but assuming good jujitsu, assuming that, you know, he's not having a catastrophic injury or like a heart attack or something, he's going to stay standing. So when you introduce that change, you can capitalize on that by coming up. Now, it looks like to me you were looking to go for a leg entanglement just by the way you, you didn't pop up. You angled a little bit there, which is also fine. But if that's the case, look to keep his feet off the floor. Uh, I challenge anyone out there to stand without using their feet. 
okay? And obviously, you could do like a handstand, but I mean, literally, w without putting your feet on the, gr on the floor, stand up. It's not going to happen, right? You can't, you can't stand without your feet on the floor. It's not standing. It's something else, but it's not standing. This is annoying. I mean, I, it's just, just, it's just annoying. Could work though. I'm not gonna say it's not. Now you could discredit credit. So every time you have that avenue of getting behind his arm, where is that? Like you're getting behind the arm. Look to look to get your whole body behind it, right? Like this is right here, and and he's he's exposing your back. Anytime you can get behind someone's arm, their back is exposed, and they're also exposed for arm bars. So. It's you're looking essentially with the upper body when you're on top or on bottom. You're looking to get under or behind arms, okay? So in this case, you're behind an arm. Use that as an opportunity to get up and get on his back. He's going to open the guard. Good on him. Right into a triangle. Beautiful. Nice. So again, take your time here. You can consider this like a guarded position. Armbar, okay, nice. Lock the shoulder down. So I would attack that armbar and attack the triangle choke at the same time to give him multiple threats. Now it looks like you're doing, yeah, you just stay on the shoulder. Nice job, beautiful. Should be two points for a sweep there. What the hell is he doing? Damn, you're flexible. Nice job. Way to deal with that. That looked uh, not pleasant. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, choke him. Did you? I hope you got two points for a sweep there. All right, beautiful. Nothing wrong with this. Good old arm triangle. I would stay on top of him. I I I don't know why I see this a lot. Um, people coming off. The arm, yeah, it's ex this is this is what happens every single time. I I have uh, I wonder if I don't think I was recording. This is what happens every single time. So I I get why people do it. Well, two reasons. One is you just you get taught like that, and uh, it's not your fault. Um, you just get taught like that, and you know somebody did it like that so many years ago and decided that that's the way you do it. But exactly what happened is my concern. When you are no longer covering their hips, they have the ability to move. And if they have the ability to move, they have the ability to escape. I think that it's much more worthwhile. It, you're going to sacrifice a little power, I guess, not really, by getting off mount. But the thing is they can't move. So now you're choking them. You're draining them. Maybe it's not like the absolute perfect enclosure, which I, I don't even think is true. But maybe that's the case. But... Uh, what you got to stay there for an extra five seconds to make the choke work and they have no chance of escaping i think that's the move so all you need to do for a choke is close both sides of the neck double closure and you got it right and circle the neck double closure squeeze you have that his only way out is is movement and by you getting off mount and going to going off to the side here with that by you uncovering his hips you're giving that movement so i would recommend trying this again but not uncovering the hips when you do it. Um, it looks like the match is about to end. You clearly were up on points, so uh, nice job with that. Uh, I had a little cut there. I was thinking about doing them all at once, but you know what? I'll save them because, uh, you know, this is already going on 13 minutes, so I figured do it for another time. Uh, excellent job, Arian. Thank you for submitting the round. I will get you uh, – I'll, I'll keep doing it. I got a couple more rounds from you. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you are interested – in being on the show, please check out the description below. You can send me an email at stoptalkandrolljj at gmail.com. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this, and have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry. What was that, Jimmy? Oh, you want me to remind them to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if they can? Thanks, Jimmy. Right, and if they want to be on the show, they can check out the description below and submit a round to Stop Talk and Roll. Yeah, I have a bunch of other videos. I got this one and that one and that's a good one and what that one's my favorite. That one he, he, the guy the guy's kind of a jerk, but like it's a good it's a good